What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today, I have a cast aluminum repair job that we're gonna tackle together, and I already did the hard work of cleaning all this crap up, so I'll take this clamp off and set everything up here to where we can examine what we need to fix. So what we have in front of us today is a cast aluminum pedal assembly that is for, I believe, a hydraulic system for either maybe a gas or a brake pedal for something. I don't know what exactly. I just know that the crap's broken. I'm the guy that's got to fix it. So this is the pedal here. It gets pinned in with this pin, and I think this roller here rides like on a plunger and either pushes in or lets out to increase or decrease flow for a hydraulic system. Who knows? But pretty simple base, and the issue we have here is, well, one, this is broke off, and the other issue is cost. Apparently, this pedal assembly, uh, I guess, is like back-ordered or maybe not available or whatever, and what is out there is somewhere between six and $900 for this assembly. So obviously, if we can fix this, we can be a hero and not only make some money for our beer budget, but we can also help somebody out that's in a pickle, and that's kind of the point of what I'm doing here. So the first thing that you gotta figure out on something like this is what is it made out of? Well, I can tell you it's cast aluminum simply because of how light this is. It's not gonna be cast magnesium. I mean, if this thing came from NASA or something, maybe it could be that, but uh, let's face it, it's gonna be cast aluminum if it's light. If this was cast iron, it would still be repairable, much like cast aluminum, but obviously your preferred casting would be just like a form of a non-high carbon steel because that would be the easiest to repair. However, I will be honest, this is not gonna be a easy repair for a lot of you at home to tackle, and let me explain why. I've done a lot of cast aluminum repairs over the years with a very high success rate, to be honest. The worst being something that held oil, like a cast aluminum valve cover or a oil pan. Those are the worst because that oil soaks in this porous structure inside of here. And I'm telling you, you'll weld on it and you'll never get the porosity out of it. This being a pedal assembly, you can tell the grain structure looks poor. This wasn't doused in oil all day. I think our success rate is going to be fairly high with this, and I give about a 98% probability that I can fix this and have it last. So that's a plus. But for a lot of you guys at home that don't have access to an AC TIG welder, this repair is gonna fall under the, you probably aren't gonna have success category, and I hate to be honest on that. When you use the MIG process with like a spool gun or a push-pull gun, MIG is a great process, don't get me wrong, but aluminum is one of those where repair jobs on castings like this, you're gonna have a major struggle on it. And the reason is, with TIG, I can sit here with an arc on this turn it to liquid and boil out all the impurities right out of it without adding filler. With MIG, with your spool gun and whatnot, you can't just sit there and boil the impurities out. You have to put metal down too because, well, your wire is the electrode. That's what passes electricity into the part as well. So what ends up happening with MIG is, is you'll run a bead with this and your bead is going to be full, completely full of junk porosity and then you're going to have to grind 99% of that bead out, re-weld it, 99% of the bead grind out, and do that over and over until you get, essentially, a weld on this that isn't full of porosity. Because if this is full of porosity, well, this didn't appear to have too much or any porosity to begin with. Well, if you weld it and it's full of junk in there, it's just going to break again, realistically. So that's something to be aware of. I don't think you're going to have too much success with your standard, you know, push pull or your spool gun uh, unless you really want to work at this and keep grinding your weld out. Not to mention, you're going to have a lot of difficulties welding something this thick and getting proper penetration if you don't have at least a decently powerful MIG welder. So, again, TIG is the ideal process for this, or believe it or not, oxyacetylene with aluminum welding rods works really good on something like this. 
So with that said, one of the things you need to do when you make repairs like this is determine why it failed in the first place. I determined that this shaft, which is steel, being in an aluminum bore, and granted I cleaned and buffed this at least a little bit, a lack of grease and sitting for a while produced a lot of rust on here and likely what happened is this pin stopped pivoting, someone slammed the pedal down hard because it was binding up and then it broke this ear off. So when I'm all done welding this back together and deburring the edges of this hole and cleaning that out, I'm definitely going to make a point to put some grease on here to help that so hopefully it never happens again. Because the last thing you want to do is repair something for a customer and then have it fail six months later because you failed to identify why it failed in the first place. So with that said, let's look at some common ways to clean this even though I already did. So I already started prepping this because I wasn't planning on shooting a video on this, but I'll talk about the process I use. The first step you want to do is clean the part completely. I tend to use something like Windex or acetone and I scrub the absolute hell out of this to get as much of this filth. We don't want that anywhere near where we're welding. Now you want to be careful what chemicals you use. If you use a chlorinated brake cleaner on this and take a couple puffs of it while you're welding on it, you're going to be a vegetable. So don't do that. Use straight acetone or maybe Windex. And I generally clean it really good and wipe it with acetone as a final, give it time to dry, and then I weld it. Because you don't want to be breathing the fumes realistically on any of this crap. After it's completely scrubbed clean, where as much of the filth is off as you can get, I use these green Rolock discs. These work really good for surface prep. They're not overly aggressive, and you can throw them away when you're done, which if you're like me, it avoids a situation where you use these for steel, for stainless, for aluminum, and then you can cross-contaminate your aluminum with everything else. Because these are so cheap, and throw away it you just have a clean surface all the time with these now this is a fine grit the green i also use the red ones which is more aggressive they make gold ones i think these are more aggressive than the red ones but green and red that's all you really need and you need one of these things to hold this it just twists on okay very handy you may be able to use these in a drill if the drill is a higher speed uh, die grinder like this thing is by far the better tool for that. And speaking of a die grinder, another thing you can use to prep aluminum is a burr bit. And that's what I have a carbide burr in here. Now, I unfortunately, because I'm too cheap, don't have any aluminum ones where they have very few flutes. Uh, this is meant really for steel. And the issue you can have is when you're trying to grind the surface off, the burr bit will oftentimes load up with aluminum and it can be an absolute bastard to clean it out of there. So a trick I learned is to basically use bar soap, I got Irish Spring, bury the burr in it to load it up a little bit and then when you kind of peck at it a little bit, uh, the chips, the aluminum doesn't fuse to it. But that soap trick will help you out tremendously when you don't have the right bits and it will grind into that like nobody's business. Another thing that you really need to be mindful of is using a brand new stainless brush, or I guess it doesn't have to be brand new, but a stainless brush that you only use on aluminum. Because if you were to use this on steel, it's gonna get steel dust and particulate on here. Well, you're gonna grind that into your aluminum and then it's gonna create porosity, AKA weak welds. We don't want that. So if you have like some old crap brush like this. I'm guilty of it. I'll use this on aluminum. And you know what? When porosity rears its ugly head while I'm welding, guess who I have to blame? The brush. Definitely not me. Well, anyways. So as you can see, the whole area around that we're going to be welding is all clean to bright, shiny aluminum. In the case of this, I still left the rough aluminum casting in there. And I'll show you why. Anytime you're dealing with a part like this that has some kind of, not necessarily precision, but an alignment that matters, by leaving the rough casting where it broke, we have an absolute finite location for where this goes. 
And if I ground all of this smooth and beveled it and then welded it, this thing would be a lot harder and a lot more time consuming to have on or off or in alignment with that pin. So simply by leaving the rough broken casting, setting this on there, clamping it down and tacking the ends, then grinding out both sides, we can maintain absolute alignment. And I found this to work exceptionally well with aluminum the reason being that aluminum doesn't move much when you weld it. If this was a stainless casting and I were to do that and weld it, everything is going to move. This plate's probably going to warp. But in the case of this, we're not going to have that issue. And this should work pretty good. So what I did is I beveled this, beveled this, cleaned up the edges. I'm going to set this on here, clamp it, and then I'm going to tack weld the ends really hot and then basically grind that whole section out where that crack is all the way in, weld it, and then I'm going to back grind the other side all the way out, weld that. And ultimately we should have 100% clean weld all the way through this and it probably won't break again. At least that's our goal. So why don't I zoom out and let's weld this. So as you can see, I have it beveled out there and I'll be able to put a really decent end weld here and get this all fused real nice. And I put the pin in there to show you how because we're using where it broke as a locator, this thing fits in there perfect and spins freely. So I ran one pass in there and it bubbled up bad porosity, just looked terrible. And that's fine. That's pretty typical. So at the first pass in, I ground say 80% of it out. And then I did two more passes over it and they welded by far cleaner. Now this is still a little bit filthy in there. And you can see some black pepper as it's called in there which is somewhat of soot, somewhat of surface porosity. So now what I'm going to do is kind of do a very light surface grind on this to clean it up a little bit, wire brush it, wipe it with acetone, and then I'm going to do probably three beads over this end to end, and that should be just fine for this. It should finish that side up, and then we're going to go and do the same thing I did on this side on the other side. So basically rinse and repeat, you just put a well down if you see too much porosity coming up and you can't boil it out, then let it solidify, grind it out and weld over it. And this is all filled in. I touched this up with a grinder a little bit to get clearance for the pedal. And I'm not a big fan of grinding off the weld unless absolutely necessary you're better off leaving a little bit oversized of a weld especially because if the internals have any porosity or if you put down a weak weld grinding off any little bit of clean material you might have is probably going to weaken it enough to where it'll fail again and let me show you the other side as well so the other side looks pretty good when i tied into the base plate where i didn't clean it well enough 
Got a little bit of pinned up porosity there. And you know what? I'm not going to grind this whole thing out and then re-weld it. The weld is actually already oversized and that little bit isn't going to hurt anything. It's to be expected on, you know, really filthy aluminum like this. And again, it always comes back to your prep work, guys. I said it earlier, prep is king. Even a little bit of a poor prep and look at that. Well, it's looking real good, I would say. Let's go to conclusion. So what did we learn today? Well, I learned that prep matters more than anything and don't skimp on it like I did because you're going to make mistakes. And that's what this whole channel is about is making mistakes and learning from them. Another mistake I made on this is I really should have tacked the corners like I did, ground out the inside first and welded that first because it would have given me better access on this side. And what I mean by that is I could have welded it fully and then ground almost all the way through. And I did have a little bit of porosity in there. Long story short, it ended up requiring me to do more grinding. And I don't know, the, the least accessible location or side you should do first because then it's far easier to grind stuff out on an accessible side. But this is a typical aluminum repair on cast that I would do and it's not that pretty it's not perfect but given the base material and how well it actually did weld this will be a lasting repair and it far beats paying $700 for a new assembly and that's one of the great things when you can weld aluminum and you have an AC TIG welder you can do cool repairs like this and save you or your buddies uh, money or you can make money doing this. I mean, this is only a, maybe a 45 minute job, maybe an hour tops if I wasn't filming it. And I've done plenty of stuff like this for a hundred bucks, 125 bucks cash all day long. You know, you just saved someone five, 600 bucks. You made some money and you bettered your skills. You know, every time I do something like this, I learn something new, but it, it is definitely repaired. I can tell just by how it feels and the lack of porosity when I ground through it uh, multiple times that this is going to be a lasting repair. So the customer will be happy. I'm happy. Everything's good in that respect. The soap trip worked on a carbide burr. I know you probably can't see that, but this thing isn't even loaded up or anything. I just took a little toothbrush, uh, a metal brush just dusted the soap off of it and it's looking perfect so it's ready. You know these things are so expensive you don't want to throw them out unless they're completely wore out. But yeah the pin fits on it. I'll assemble it, show you that and then we'll call it a day. So this is how it's assembled I believe and you can see that roller presses on like a piston or something. But that shaft's in there and this thing is freer than it's probably ever been but I'm still going to clean up these holes, this pin. I mean, this thing is just absolutely filthy. I mean, look at it in there. I'm going to clean all this up, grease the hell out of it, and return it. So, I know all you don't have a AC TIG welder, but maybe you should get one if you want to do repairs like this. You know, most of the people out there can't TIG weld aluminum, and if you can, you can make yourself a lot of money because not many people can, and it's a very, very valuable skill. So hopefully you learned something. Until next time, guys.